Hi friends and welcome back to my crafty space where I share my memory keeping projects and processes with all of you. My name is Crystal and I am so excited that you are here today. Today I am telling my second story kit crush story <laughs> using the home Allie Edwards story kit. If you have never heard of Story Kit Crush before, the whole idea is to pick a kit, an older kit, from your stash and to try and crush it or use up the entire kit throughout the course of the month. So today is the second project I am working on, the second story that I am telling using Home. So I only have this kit digitally. So I am going to be taking you guys over to my computer onto Photoshop Creative Cloud to show you how I created all of the little elements that this page is going to have. Uh, but before we get there, let me just tell you what this is all about. So I saw this card on in the kit that said numbers in this home, counting the stuff of life. It's a four by six card. And I thought that that was a really fun story to tell, to like count a bunch of random things in our house and tell the story of those. So that's what I did. Um, now I did take that original card and I altered it to create a full page with it. So I'm going to have a full page journaling section and a full page photo that goes with it. I also have a couple of embellishments that I either just printed as they were or some of them I made. And then I used the cork numbers, which digitally they're just like a PNG. I used those to create a cut file in order to make the numbers that are going that will be going into the different spots. So let me get you guys started by taking you over to my computer and I will show you how I put together this page and specifically how I made this journaling page out of that four by six card. Then we'll come back over here. I will put this thing together and then we will close out once we're done. So let's go ahead and head on over to the computer. All right, friends, welcome to Photoshop Creative Cloud here on my computer screen. So let's just jump right in and get started with this project. So this one is going to be quite a bit um, Photoshop heavy here because I am working with just the digital kit. So um, I'm going to be making a bunch of alterations before we print everything off to go over to my craft desk. Now, the inspiration for this project came entirely from this journaling card right here that says numbers in this house, counting the stuff of life. Um, now, this card has like these two little sections right um, at the top and then one large section at the bottom. What I decided I wanted to do was to make these sections more even and then to take this four by six journaling card and turn it into a full outside of the page protector page. So 6.875 by 8.25. So let me show you how I went about doing this. First, I went over and grabbed my marquee tool and then just created a selection area um, of mostly the white area all the way down to the bottom, right click and layer via copy. Once I have that done, I can switch over to my move tool and I can just adjust down uh, and I'm gonna do it right until it covers up that bottom line there. Um, actually, it might be even less than that. Let's see here. We'll start here um, in order to create a bigger space here at the top. Then with this layer still selected, I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to grab that marquee tool and this time I'm going to go right under that first gray line all the way to the bottom and then right click and layer via copy. Again, we'll switch over to the move tool and then we will adjust that down towards the bottom. Now my goal here is just to get these as uh, even as possible and I'm just doing it by eye so if it's not perfect that's okay too. All right so this looks this looks pretty good so now what I'm going to do is merge all those layers together which you can select all the layers in the layer panel right click and merge layers or you can just hit uh, control I think it's control shift E. It could even be control E. Anyway, um, that's going to merge all those layers together. So now this is one four by six card. So now what I want to do is open up a new canvas. This one's gonna be that 6.875 by 8.25. So that is the full size of the canvas I want to create. There we go. And then I'm just going to come back and grab this card, select all of it and copy it. And then I will paste it right onto the canvas over here. 
So now what I want to do is bring it all the way up to the top. I want to transform it so I can expand it all the way to the edge. So now it is touching both of the edges. I'm going to hit enter and then that is going to um, bring it all into focus. Now I'm going to do pretty much the same thing again. So with this layer still selected, I'm going to grab that marquee tool and I'm going to select just under the yellow all the way down to the bottom and layer via copy. Grab that move tool again and now we're going to move this down. So here is the uh, caveat, I suppose, is that I want to have, I want this to be as even as possible um, and I want there to be six spots for me to add journaling into. So now you see if I move this all the way down to the bottom, we're missing a row in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is just add this until it just is right under, let's see, where are you? There we go, until it's right under the grayish line there, right about there is probably good. And then I will take that same layer again and then we're going to create another section uh, from, where do I want to take you? From maybe just above the gray line all the way down to the bottom. I think that will work. And then we're going to layer via copy again. And now let's grab that one and bring it down to the bottom. So here are our sections. Now you see here, oh, I should move this over actually until it's, hmm, what's going on here? Let's. Why is that there? You know what? That's okay. That's okay. What we're going to do is just grab a eraser. There's just like this little line over here. I don't know what that's about. So let's um, pop on here and we're just going to erase those little sections because I don't want those. There we go. That looks better. Anyway, so now we have this section here at the bottom and I don't want to just erase it and then have like one section larger than all the others. So what I'm going to do is merge all of these layers together to start. So now we have just one layer. And then all I'm gonna do is grab my marquee tool, select each of the sections, layer via copy, switch over to the move tool and just adjust it down slightly. What's going on here? You know what, let's not do that. I want to, okay, I want to select a, a larger area. So yeah, I wanna select a larger area here all the way to the bottom. Then we're going to layer via copy and then then we'll use the move tool to adjust it down just a bit. And we're going to do that to all of the sections. And every time I'm going to merge it back together and then we'll do the next one, switch to the move tool, adjust it down just a little bit. Looks good, merge together. Let's do it to the next one. And we're just gonna keep going until that bottom line is gone. <laughs> Okay, let's do it to this one. Okay, and then, you know what, let's do one last time to this one here. Layer via copy, move, and just down a tiny little bit. Okay merge together. All right, so now we've got a full page going here. So then what I decided to do was, what I want to do with this page is to add numbers into this first section uh, that is going to signify like the number of something and then the journaling will go into the larger squares. Now I want to use the cork numbers, which when they are digital, they are just, you know, a PNG, it's not cork. Uh, but I am going to have my silhouette cut these out just to give this page a little bit of additional texture and color. But what happens is if I copy this and paste it over, first of all, I need to shrink it down. But um, I probably don't want it any smaller than that. And I can only fit one in that square. And I have, I have items that I counted that have up to three numerals. So I want to make these squares bigger as well. And I also wanna shift this entire page slightly to the right so that I can put hole punches on the left side. So here's what we're going to do. First, we're gonna do the same thing that we've been doing all along. We're just gonna use that marquee tool, grab. You know, I can actually, let's unselect that. We're gonna grab the entire page 
and layer via copy. And then we will nudge this over until that counting the stuff of life is almost to the edge. So now that is going to give us some extra space over here for hole punches. Next, let's merge that together. Next, we want to make some bigger area to add our numbers in here and here. So same thing, grab that marquee tool and um, I'm just going to go right under where the white is. So I don't want to get any of this white in there and go all the way to the bottom as a selection layer via copy again. So this is just playing with uh, moving these things all around. So maybe to like right there. So now because I moved the whole thing over, this section is now smaller than this section. So what I want to do is merge these layers together. And now I want to use my marquee tool to grab this little middle bit right here. We will layer via copy. And now when we move this section, I actually want to move it to the left. So we're going to make this square area bigger and the journaling area smaller so that it matches. So the two journaling areas match. And these will be slightly different because we're just we're putting holes over here. So we don't want to forget that we're hole punching this side. Um, and now I think that this looks pretty good. So we will merge it all together. And now this is the basis of all of my journaling. So what I will do is add text boxes into each of these sections and add my journaling in. Let's just change that to black. There we go. Uh, so these will become journaling spots and, you know, we'll put one in each of the each of the 12 spots. For the numbers, all I did was uh, open up those cork numbers. So we've got one through nine here. So I opened these up and then um, copied them over onto the canvas itself and adjusted their size. And I wanted to adjust it so that I could fit for sure two, but up to three numbers per square. So like right maybe right in there. Um, let's grab one more number. Uh, how about let's open two. So let's say 20. So we will copy this one and paste it over onto oops, paste it over onto here. Once you have one where you want it to be, you can just line up the second one so that it's even with the top. And then when you shrink it down, just shrink the bottom up to the bottom. So now I know that these two items are the same size. So let's say that this is actually 20 is our number, just like that. So I know I can fit two here. Uh, I do have one thing that I counted that had three numbers. So I'll put that over here just so I don't, I know for sure it won't interfere with the hole punches. Um, and then when I go to print this out, I'm actually going to take those numbers off. So they are not going to be part of what's printed. Um, the numbers I will add to a separate document. So I would just open up like a six by four and then grab those numbers. Let's just select them, copy them and paste them over onto a different document. This will allow them to stay the size that I want them to be. Then I can save it as a PNG in order to open it in silhouette and create a cut file for those numbers. So let me pull open the finished page that I made here, just so you guys can see what it looks like once it's all done. So let's get rid of all this stuff. Okay, so we'll open that up. It is right here. So here's how it ends up looking, where I put all of my numbers in. I did add my date up at the top so that I don't have to do that later. And then I put all of my journaling in. So then when I go to print it, um, what I am going to be printing is only going to be this right here. So no numbers. Um, the numbers I'll add later. So in addition to this page and the numbers, the other thing that I did was to take my photo. So this is a photo I'm going to be using and decide on which embellishments I want to use for this photo. So um, I am actually going to use the uh, chipboard piece right here that says no place like home. So this I'm going to do nothing to it. I'm just going to print it just like that. Then I also opened up the, um, it says life happens here and it's this gray color, but I decided I wanted it to be blue. So I just opened up 
this one that's at home with you. It's blue. I grabbed the color of it with my color picker, went back over to the Life Happens Here chipboard and just used my paint can to paint the color blue, including the little insides. And then I changed my color to white in order to paint in, we'll zoom in here, in order to paint in the words themselves as well. So then it'll be blue with white words. Um, let's close out of that and I can show it to you on here. So this is what it ends up looking like. Life happens here, blue with white. And then I also really liked this sentiment on this journaling card. It says, feels like home. So what I decided to do was to create a circle with it. I just went to my shapes, grabbed the ellipse tool, and then single clicked in the middle. This brings up a menu that lets me type in exactly what I want it to be. So I said two inches by two inches. That's going to create my outline. I will have um, the middle, or I'm gonna fill it with white, just like that. And then I can move this right on top of the, um, feelings, you know, feels like home. Over on the layers panel, I'm going to unlock the background so that I can move it on top of the ellipse. And then I will create a clipping mask so that it fits right inside of that circle. Um, and I also don't want there to be, let's go to the ellipse. I don't want there to be an outline. Perfect. There we go. So now there's no outline, feels like home, looks good. And what I will do is, um, merge these together and save it just like that so I can print this separately and it's just a circle that I can punch out and use as an embellishment later. So I think that that is going to cover all of the bits and pieces that will create my spread. I do have uh, an idea of what it's going to look like just like this. So I've got the embellishments down in the lower left corner and then those numbers I'm going to to cut out a various color cardstock just to give it some additional like colorful brightness um, and then you know some additional texture as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get these things printed out and cut out and then I will meet you guys over at the craft table to actually assemble this project and get it in the books. So now that we have the computer portion out of the way, that was the more complicated part of this spread. The actual assembling the spread together is really easy and comes together pretty quickly. So what I'm gonna do is get everything trimmed out. I um, just use my Fiskars trimmer to get all the picture and the background. And then I will uh, fussy cut out the two triangles and then I have a punch there, a two inch punch circle punch that I can use to cut out the circle portion. That just makes that part really easy to just have the punch for it. Um, and then once I have all those bits and pieces trimmed out, I will start adhering down the numbers onto, onto my journaling section. Uh, now you can see them in that little tray there that I've got pink and blue and orange. So when I used my silhouette to cut those out, I, um, I just picked coordinating cardstock that, that matched the, um, the embellishments that I had printed out. So they, they match that. And so it just kind of reflects the same colors on both of the pages. If you would like to know how to, how to cut these numbers out for uh, like using a silhouette, I did this on the last home project as well. I'll link that one up at the eye for you guys. Um, Actually, I might even, I think I linked it earlier in this video, but that video will show you exactly how to take the numbers, resize them, and then create a cut file for silhouette to get them cut out. So if you are interested in learning that, um, head on over to that video and check it out there because I forgot to actually add that to the computer portion of this one. So sorry about that. Then I am going to take those chipboard pieces and add them to some recycled box material um, in order to give them a little bit of dimension, make them feel a little bit more like real chipboard, and I will add those onto the picture. While I'm doing that here, let me just tell you the things that I counted, just uh, so you guys can have some fun ideas of things that you can count. So on my numbers in this house page, I said that we have five beings equals one family because we have four people and one cat. I said we have 46 pairs of shoes, 10 fuzzy blankets, 54 board games, eight permanent carpet stains, one TV, 
52 stuffed animals, 37 scrapbooks, nine different types of beer in the fridge, 112 children's books, 35 places to sit, and 21 pieces of kids artwork displayed. So I literally just sat down and thought about like things that are very much a part of our life right now. So that's where like artwork and kids books and scrapbooks and beer and like the things that are a huge part of our life right now. And I thought it would be super fun to go count those things. And then also some other random things like shoes and fuzzy blankets. So those are just things that we, we have a lot of them. So I thought it would be fun and quirky to go count them all. Definitely a fun exercise, and I was actually really surprised how many kids' books we had. I did not expect to be in the triple digits for that, but here we are. <laughs> so anyway, I am just getting those uh, chipboard pieces adhered down. I put this circle one where it interacts with the pages or interacts with the edges of the page, which I really like to do, especially with circles. I like them to hang off the edge a little bit and just trim a piece off. And then that is really going to complete the spread. So I will pull it back over and then we will slow down and close you guys out. All right, you guys, that finishes this spread. This looks super cool. I love the way that this turned out and having all of the colors over here and all the colors over here and it's just full of color, full of color. Love it and love all these little like micro stories. That was really fun to tell and definitely something I would recommend to just like make a list of totally random things and then go count them in your house and tell the story of why you have so many of those things <laughs> um, or why you don't have a lot of those things, you know, whatever it is. Uh, anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this process video. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up down below and hit that subscribe button so you can see all of my future crafty videos. I will be back this weekend with um, another video, another process video for the Traveler's Notebook I've been working on. And then I will be back again next Friday with another story kit crush project using the home kit. So I hope you guys will join back in then. If you are crushing this kit, make sure to leave me a comment down below letting me know so I can follow along with the projects that you are creating as well. And yeah, until next time, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and I will catch you all in the next video. Bye now.